In order to better understand what makes our favorite vintage synthesizer sound so good, we will start right at the beginning of the signal path, the raw waveforms produced by their oscillators. First, let's look at a basic software-generated waveform, in this case, a sawtooth wave as generated by Audacity. We'll now import our software-generated sawtooth waveform into our DAW where we've recorded a sawtooth from an old ARP 2600. If we take a look at both waveforms by zooming in or using something like Smexoscope, we can see that there are some distinct differences between the two. The Audacity wave is perfect, while the ARPS has little imperfections at the peaks. Now let's take a look at a sawtooth wave generated by Moog's venerable Mini Moog Model D, a vintage unit, not the recent reissue. In this case, we see that the phase of the sawtooth wave is flipped, but that doesn't matter in the audio range. What does matter is that it has even more pronounced imperfections than the 2600 sawtooth wave. Things start to get really interesting when comparing a software-generated square wave with one produced by a vintage analog synthesizer. Here we've got a nearly perfect square wave from Audacity and another quite imperfect square wave from Sequential Circuits Prophet 5. Check out those spiky peaks. Believe it or not, the Prophet 5 square wave is pretty good for an analog synth. Now let's take a look at the square wave produced by that most cantankerous of synthesizers, the VCS-3. Surprisingly, it looks pretty darn good. It isn't a near-perfect specimen like that produced by Audacity, but it'll give the Prophet 5 a run for the money, and it's far truer than that produced by an original Korg MS-20, as seen here. Needless to say, a skilled developer doesn't simply generate a mathematically perfect waveform and hope we don't hear the difference. For example, Yuhi's clone of Sequential Circuits Pro 1, the Repro 1, offers up a square wave that shares many of the characteristics of those we've seen from Vintage Gear. Here we're comparing Repro 1 on the bottom with the Prophet 5 on the top. Similarly, it's clear that Steinberg did some homework in order to make their retro log synth as accurate as possible. Here we can see the sawtooth wave from our original Mini Moog on top, with the all but identical sawtooth from the retro log displayed on the bottom scope. This is likely as close as one actual Mini Moog is to another. Now, just for kicks, let's take a look at a couple of square waves from some modern analog hardware synths to see how they stack up. Here we have a specimen from a Synthesizers.com oscillator. And below it, we've got a square wave from an Electron Analog 4. Both exhibit different hallmarks of a well-designed analog synthesizer with a bit of vintage flavor.